is FTC, and I'm going to be covering Losers Bracket Match 18. Um, 13 on top, and Ogot Bears on bottom. Okay, this is the pre battle analysis, and as Gaikman pointed out, um, since most people have seen these squads before, we're going to keep them short, and we're just going to point out what's different because of because it's just these two these two teams now matching up before instead of what they used to face. Okay, HP here would favor would favor Ogot Bears because. Well, you can just look at it. He has two tanks, the other squad has one. He also has much higher damage output. In fact, that's all his squad's capable of. But 252 off Kiku from that wizard is scary. As is a ninja capable of dealing... Capable of throwing a 6 range concentrate at off 13 speed. But then again, it's not that bad because the entire enemy squad... Is, has bad compat with the ninja and the lancer. So the two heaviest damage dealers who go in first with high speed and strike stuff can't do anything. So, or well, can't be as effective. Status, however, is pretty much all 13 squad is good for, so he takes that bracket without even having to think. Luck favors 13, but only slightly, and this is because, well, he has Charm, he has Confuse, and he has Mimic Dark. And if any of those things go off, well, God Bears is in trouble, even though bad compat and um, just generally low faith it makes it unlikely if it does happen, he's in trouble. Synchronization favors really neither team in this case because both of them have very, very bad synchronizations with, with inter-team. For example, as some, um, I won't go through all the details, but I'll just point out that Having accessories that null, say, status effects does nothing against Oh God Bears' team, but that's all 13 has for accessories. While Oh God Bears has some interesting and probably bad ideas on that wizard, like 40 faith and flare without short charge, 201, in, and 201 HP. Or a knight, this is probably less so because he has defense up, but he's, he has holy, 70 faith, and only 8 MA, which means he's not really going to be dealing damage with holy. He's not really going to be... He might not even get raised too often without getting mid-charge, but again, he has defense up, so he should be fine. And, but otherwise, but notice that this kind of synchronization only affects the units if they're caught mid-charge. While, the, while essentially four units, which is actually only affecting two units, maybe three if you believe that a suicide ninja is, probably works better if it has an angel ring, but that's a minor issue. But if you look at all four units on Oga, uh, not Oga Bears, on 13 squad, all four units on 13 squad have essentially one equipment slot that does them no good at all. That's a much bigger penalty than two units who may screw up in battle. However, that may screw up in battle is why the AI would favor um, 13. It's nothing to do with 13 making an AI exploitation trick. More, it's more of Oga Bears has high CTR spells going off on units who may not be able to survive them. Okay, and with that being said, let's actually see what the match looks like. This is FTC. This is going to be loser's bracket number 18 between 13 on top and Oh God Bears on the bottom. 13 has Sammy the Time Mage, purely support. Lovey the Thief, mostly support. 2D the Ninja, partially attack, but again, mostly support. And Play the Knight, mostly, mostly support, though has some damage. So again, 13 squad revolves entirely around supports, namely negative status effects, and some healing into a squad, but not much. Um, then we look at Oh God Bears' squad. We have Teddy Bear, the, the, the ninja, mostly damage, though he has support in the form of Fairy. Grizzly the Knight, which again, does damage, but is mostly support and tanking, with Holy and Raise 2 on white magic. Koala the Wizard, which is completely damaged. And Kermo the Lancer, which is mostly damage, except when he wants to be an item bot. Okay, the first map is going to be map 106. Delta. Okay, so notice immediately this is a broken map. In other words, it's a map that has broken terrain on it. This favors squads that have fly, ignore height, teleport, and not squads that have either poor low either have low movement or that have low movement low jump or both notice that the wizard's teleporting across the gap while the lancer and the knight are trying to move through it this is probably bad ai on its part because you saw that that because if you, anyone looked at the movement you, move, movement bar you saw that that lancer could actually move across and it didn't damage split 
uh, 41. This was actually a good idea on 13's part to put the stronger weapon in the second slot so it can get so less damage is damage slated. Essentially, right now it's it's one on four because Ogot Bears has only one unit in the action. And notice that even though that thief took a terminal amount of damage from 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 both throw and then from from two from two hits from that ninja, that that thief really didn't go down because okay, MP switch activates, saving that wizard's life. Because of bad compat. Also, you'll notice that Ogon Bears gave his ninja a bunch of different throwing abilities, including stuff like Shuriken, Ball, as well as as well as Sword and Dictionary. That's not a good idea because your ninja will arbitrarily spam things, including Okay, and the highest damage dealer on on 13 squads down. That ninja's down. So Essentially, this is a battle of whose ninja charges forward the first, wh whose ninja charges forward and dies because of it, the first. Wh wh whichever squad loses their ninja that way is probably going to lose the match. So right now, it's favoring Ogod Bears. Okay, so, two, so it's four on two, and... <laughs> if that ninja was hasted, that would have been hilarious. But fortunately, that wasn't the case. Okay, so Ogon Bears' squad is slowly advancing through these crevices, and sooner or later, it's going to win. And if they keep getting mid-charges like that, they'll be much, much easier. That knight has no ranged abilities except Confuse, which is actually not good, because that knight will be stuck doing nothing but that. It would have, this is probably one of the bigger problems with, with um, 13 squad. It has, no, it has minimal damage at range, which means that it can't really punish low, low moving units, low HP units that then try to run, like that ninja right there. Okay, Grizzly heals. Some. Now the ninja walks over and keeps attacking. Notice, notice, okay, the knight's death sentence. This will end briefly. Wait, he has an angel ring. He might, he might, it might just wear off before anything happens. Meanwhile, they're all going to be ignoring him. However, that, however, I don't think that knight has a resurrection ability, so it doesn't matter that a knight is death sentence. He can't do anything. To help even the fight, this is already over. We're just watching that knight die. He's going for spell absorb. Eh, not like it matters anymore. Yep, and the knight's gonna be attacked again. This, unless that knight takes Kiku damage or um, Holy Spear damage, this is gonna take a long time to finish. Simply because that ninja really can't do anything. Okay, so we see a Holy Proc go off for 117. And then, and then 112 off of jump. This is the power of good compat, I mean bad compat, and then defense up. We're literally invulnerable, except to magic, in this case. <laughs> wow, a confused knight, but he'll be taken out of it by a shuriken. So, no, no problems here. The knight's out of MP, so he starts doing other things. Otherwise, he would have probably used holy again. Slow and short, that lancer's jump would go off. And then, this is just a mercy kill, a sura. Which, in the case of that wizard, that'll deal with 168. That's a lot. Anyhow, I'll be seeing you all for the next map. This is FTC, and we're going to do round 2 of loser's bracket number 18 between 13 and Ogot Bears. Ogot Bears won match number 1 handily, despite the fact...
that his ninja charged f forward into an enemy squad of four units simply because, well, an enemy status squad doesn't deal enough damage to put that ninja down, especially when bad combat was a factor. Of course, that ninja didn't deal too much damage himself, but he didn't need to. All he had to do was hold them off until reinforcements arrived. And once 13th ninja charged forward and then died, and that was the only damage dealer really on his squad, well, there was nothing left to see. Let's see if something like that happens again on a medium map, Underground Cemetery of Limberry Castle, where you fight Zolera. Okay. Now that the squads are closer together, rather than clumped up and split up by weird terrain, this should be faster and less glitchy on the AI. And like I said, Steelheart only had like a 33% chance. That's because of bad compat. The Thief might as well just have not done it, but then again, the, the, the AI can't do that. It doesn't understand. But I suspect many humans probably would have gone for that 33% charm anyways. Because it's charm. Essentially, that wizard does not have 201 HP, that wizard has a 352 because of MP switch, which is a nice, which is a good idea. Wow. It locked with an Aegis shield. And now Kiku finishes the time ages, so it's already 4 on 2 in favor of Oh God Bears. 13 doesn't look very good right now. That night, oh wait. Oops, your critical made it so you couldn't hit the second shot. But that one. But, it's, but a critical is a critical, eh? So the time mage goes away and tries to cast haste again. And despite the very low chance, the thief was hasted. Okay, so the, the wizard finally goes down, and the enemy ninja walks into the cure range for all of 67 HP. Like I said, cure knights are not a good idea. And this, Especially be especially male cure knights. And, sh and that and now that wizard has full H full HP all has now has full HP. This is one of the, one of the few quirks of having only of having that low HP. You Murasami can heal you for to fall, but then again, it can also mess up your ability to actually work. But then again, 201 isn't really anything to be, it isn't anything to be proud of. Okay, that ninja just took a power ruin, which means his damage output is now less than before, and as you can tell, he can't, he can't even, he can't even one-shot that time mage while mid-charging. Essentially, this match isn't over because, essentially, both squads as ninjas are getting, are, are running headlong into the enemy team and dying. So the question really is, whose ninja is going to survive? Whose ninja is going to die first? And, and how badly are the squads going to maul each other because of one because of one on three? Wow, that, that ninja, after that power room, that ninja just can't do stuff anymore. Okay. The confusion song probably was unnecessary in that part. And Raze 2 missed off a 95% chance last time. Wow. Considering how long that knight has to charge to do it, that's bad. Okay, so I would argue the initiative has shifted now mostly to... Mostly to 13, simply because his units are together. They're mostly at full HP, and they haven't taken anything critical that has harmed them too, by too much, like... And wow, that that raise went missed again. That knight's just getting seriously unlucky. I would argue thirteen has the advantage now because well, oh God bears his ninja is charging forward and dying, and and at the rate his other squad mates are are acting, they're not going to be able to heal that ninja anytime soon. And a 33% charm goes off. Wow. 
So it's just total, it's just total lock in favor of Oga, uh, not Oga Bears, um, I mean 13 right now. And now it's down to 3v4. Let's see how long that keeps up before that ninja comes back. Considering how deep he is in enemy territory, this could take a while. Okay, that time mage is about to go down. The only other healer on that squad is that thief. So if they can take down that thief as well, there will be no more resurrections for a uh, wow. And the Lancer is charmed after, after another 33%. Oh. 13 is just getting really, really lucky throughout this entire match. And to break charm, the knight now has to proc holy of all spells on his own squad main. <laughs> and I... Yup. Good, com good compact. Charm. One shot. Wow. Well, Charm's gonna get broken this turn, but it's now what? By the way, berserking a guy who could deal 200 damage to your entire squad isn't a good idea. But he's Charmed again, so there's nothing left to watch now. Now it's essentially 5 on 1. Yes. And because of compat reasons, you can't even hurt their, you can't even hurt their squad very well. Okay, this is over. If I, and if I get another confusion loop, okay, good. Not another confusion loop. I don't even want to see that. That would that would just be wrong. Okay. So we're just watching a squad of four units who can't deal too much damage slowly but surely eviscerate two knights while all their teammates disappear. Sooner or later, one of those confusion procs are gonna hit. Okay, so the knight's confused. This, we might have another one of those loops again. If I do, if, it, if this doesn't end within 10 minutes, and there's only one unit left, we're, we're gonna, we're, I'm just gonna call this for 13. But, but that's... Okay, the knight's charmed. Because the knight is charmed, we'll still be, he will still be targeted, I think. One charm is, when, when someone tries to break charm. Eventually that Lancer is going to break charm, come to think of it. Okay, so now that knight has no weapon. This is just humiliation now. Okay, the Lancer's broken charm. Let's see if the thief tries to add it again. Okay, it misses. And wow, the Lancer is, um, so pretty much the, both, both enemy units are going to be ignored for the rest of the match. Well, because that Lancer cannot, will not be considered a target since he has an Angel Ring on. And now they're just going to systematically reduce the Knight's power to zero. And of course, unless he attacks the Time Mage and doesn't kill the Time Mage, there's no way that... They can even break charm. Unless the Lancer breaks it. Right. So, we're just watching Humiliation right now. Okay, so the Knight's now preserved. As well as charm and confused. Okay, and he's broken out of charm. And confused. This might get more interesting again. Well, the, except that the Knight dies. Just waiting on that lancer. Okay, so congrats, thirteen. You win round two, and we're going to be seeing you both of you on a small map.
in a turnaround, 13 won round two of loser's bracket, number 18, be between him and, um, blame, and not blame God, between him and Oh God Bears. What happened was that simply both squads had their ninjas charged forward, but because, but, but because of the low HP on um, Oh God Bears' wizard, and some very unlucky raised twos. That w their, their entire squad spent most of their time not help backing up the ninja. The result? Oh God Bears' ninja died, while 13's ninja escaped. This turned the match into 4v3, and eventually 4v2, and then 1. Simply by charm, berserk, and uh, confused going off in rapid succession. Let's see what happens on a small map. Hall of St. Morant Temple. I have no idea how this is small. This is at least medium. But okay. Not, nothing too much is going on. We're going for another charm and it misses. That's probability you can say. I don't think anyone's in the leaf out, is, is in the uh, KO range, though that might change after Flare gets procced. Um, there's nothing much to see right now. Both squads are setting up. Though I would argue Oh God Bears has an early advantage simply because he's about to KO two units, I think. No, he's not. That wizard gets mid charged before that happens. Okay, that time may should go down if Holy connects. Right. Well, so does so does the short charge Brave Two go off first? Nope. And another lucky shield shield block for Old God Bears. Okay, this should be over. Four v two. And from the looks of it, all the healers on. Um, on 13 squad are all about to die. Because that's definitely going to get mid-charged. Yup. Okay. It's 4v2 permanent. So, Oh God Bears should, should have this one in the bag. Now, if confusion goes off... Yup, it does. Ooh, that ninja's gonna get mid-charged. And a critical, too. Wow. So, Oh God Bears still might not win this. Luck can make, luck can make even the most sure victory a loss. <laughs> okay, that ninja's still gonna die, though, because that Lancer... No, that Lancer's gonna spend his time reviving combats. So, this is still anybody's game. Despite... All they need on that lands is one, is one death sentence proc. And sorry, don't act proc. And the whole thing would mess up. Ha! <laughs> Confused cast raise too. Okay, actually, despite that, I don't think, um... Yeah, 13 is still lost. He needs that ninja to deal damage. Without it, this is just 3 on 1. Eventually, the confusion is going to get cured, and then Night's is going to get gained up on by 3 units, all of whom can deal lots of damage. Just like in the first round. Nope. And it's... Nope, it's not over yet. But it will be. Wow. Repeated luck. 15% invades going off three times in a row. Pretty much both sides have been getting the kind of luck that shouldn't be happening but does. And then a sewer mercy kill ends the battle. Okay. Oh God Bears, you advance. 13, you've been eliminated. 